A couple of new features have been added to splines in View 11. Uh, most of them are fairly straightforward, uh, but there are some cool things we can do with the new features, and uh, there's a few options or a new feature that is not quite obvious. Uh, so first we'll just go ahead and create a spline just to take a look at the basic new functions. Uh, so you'll find these options under the Geometry tab uh, when we have a geometry object. I'm going to go ahead and modify that secondary point. It does look a little weird. Uh, and then if we go into the editor, uh, you'll notice that there are two new settings for uh, the geometry types, and that's height and offset. Uh, so with the height option, we can stretch it out and change the height of the object. Uh, so if we were to change this over to cobble, and we can adjust the height. Now if we have, uh, let's go ahead and send a height to 6. Now it's also going underneath the ground plane. Uh, so what we can do is use the other new option, which is offset, and say 3. And this is going to set it right on the ground plane, or whatever object uh, you've created the spline on. it. Uh, so this is great for creating walls, uh, which before you would have had to create multiple copies of a spline and stack them on top of each other in order to achieve uh, this height. Now, the more hidden feature uh, that I'm talking about is the ability to use displacement mapping on these objects without having to bake them first. Uh, this is really important because uh, we can use the UV coordinates of the spline and displace uh, along it. Uh, so what we're going to do is add in, uh, I'm just going to create a terrain, I'm just using the default, and I'm going to go ahead and flatten it out a little bit. And load in um, surface material for this, and I'll just use grass variations from the landscapes collection, and I'm going to go ahead and create a spline. So I'm going to move over to the top view for this, click to create a spline, And actually, I'm going to start over because I did hit and double clicked on one spot. So just create a new spline here. I'm going to go to geometry, change this over to uh, cobble, set the height to 6, offset it by 3. Actually, we'll go ahead and do 2.7 because we're on top of a terrain. And in order to make sure that uh, we don't have it rising above the terrain surface. We can just bring it a little bit under. Uh, so what I'm also going to do, uh, now the displacements for different objects uh, or work differently for different objects. So we are going to be using um, a duplicate of this and setting it to a different object mode in order to displace this wall. Uh, now what we're going to make is more of a castle type wall that has merlins along the top. And the way that the geometry works for the cobble and the road, uh, if we go ahead and switch this preview over to wireframe, uh, if you look on the edges, and it's kind of hard to see because they're grouped up really tightly, uh, the corners are just uh, full of polygons. And this affects the UV map uh, because it does act as an entire UV coordinate and will squash a texture into that section in the corner. And if we were to use the road, it's really one polygon around the top, uh, and that's not going to be sufficient. So what we're going to do is copy and paste the spline and go to edit it. And we're going to switch over to the ribbon mode, and we don't need height for that. And then we can offset it uh, to 6. And actually, we had it at 2.7, so uh, we'll go ahead and do 5.7. So this is going to put uh, the object directly on top of this one. And what we can do is displace the ribbon. Uh, so that's also really useful for creating a river where you could displace the surface and run the fractals. Uh, along it to create uh, moving water along the U. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just set this up for our castle uh, wall. And we want to edit the material. 
I'm going to switch this over to a matte picture. And I've already prepared uh, a surface for this. Uh, so this is actually on the color channel. We do need it on uh, the bump in order to displace, uh, but just in order to see it and prepare ahead of time. Uh, what I also want to do is just offset this for the moment a little bit higher. So I will change that to 6 for the offset, just so we can see. Now the U uh, coordinate is going to stretch the entire length of the spline. So this texture is just being stretched out all the way through. So what we need to do is modify uh, the scale. And if we want to have a, a set amount, a certain amount of tiles, we can just set up a little function where I'm going to add a blender node, divide, create a constant number of 1. So 1 divided by and then how many tiles we want. And this is going to be our U coordinate. So since we're working with a texture coordinate, we also need to add a composer. So I'm going to right click, add a math node, vector operation, uh, composer 2. So connect our U coordinate, and then our V coordinate is still just going to be a constant of 1. Which is also the Y coordinate, uh, depending on what you're working with. Uh, so I'm going to extract the scale and connect that. And change our tiles to, say, 60. And what we can also do is publish this. So that way we don't have to go back into the function editor to modify it. Actually, it doesn't look like it's going to update in the preview uh, because we're using the function. Uh, but we can see in the render preview how that's showing up. So it looks like that's set up just about how we need it. So I'll go back and edit the material. I'm going to edit the function and connect the bump to this output. Delete the uh, color input. And want to make sure that we have an interpolation type set up. I've got it set to bilinear. This is also a 16-bit map. Uh, so it will displace nicely. So we can go over to the bump channel, turn on displacement mapping. And just see how high that's uh, coming up here. Uh, I'm going to change this over to the object standard. Because the parametric displacement is going to be really high. Uh, so then we can also change the depth, let's say to 2, uh, maybe 1, or 1.5. We'll go with 1.5, and then we also want to take the spline and bring it back down to 5.7 for the offset. And I have this set up so that it just the edges go into the surface and it's placed downward, and then the center will displace upward. Uh, now what I also want to do, uh, because we're going to have really low geometry at this point, we're going to increase the geometry. Uh, first I'll just go ahead and show you what this looks like at the moment. Uh, so you can see it's it's kind of jagged, and that's because we've got a, a low polygon count. Uh, there's two different ways to increase the polygon count. One is to go into the spline options, and we can go up to the top and double the quality. And that'll increase the overall geometry amount. What we can also do is go into the material and increase the quality boost. If we add one, that'll also uh, increase the geometry. And some of those sections are still showing up a little jagged. And once we have a color channel on there, it'll kind of remove that. Uh, what we can also do is just take the depth down a little bit. We'll go ahead and I'm going to add the bump to the surface as well. Another thing I want to note is that the geometry quality is based 
on the size of the frame you're rendering. Uh, so the quality boost for rendering a little larger, it will divide the geometry further. Uh, but what I'm going to do is increase the quality boost a little higher. Just move out. And we can see it from a little farther away. Uh, so this is a really neat way to be able to make uh, castle-type walls uh, very quickly uh, without having to actually model anything. Now, if we're going to make any changes to the spline at all, you do need to make sure that you're uh, performing the action on both splines at the same time. So if we wanted to modify the points of the spline at all, say we go to point 1, then we also need to expand the other spline, hold down the control key, select point 1, and that way we can modify both splines at the same time. Uh, if you're going to be making a very large amount of changes, then I'd suggest uh, just making the changes to one spline, but keeping the other one in the scene with the material on it. And then what you can do is copy and paste the modified spline, uh, reset up the ribbon, and then just paste that texture. Uh, just go into the texture, select the spline, you can copy the material, and then paste it onto the new uh, ribbon. Uh, and this is another scene I created uh, with this spline setup, uh, where I've got color maps added uh, to the different splines and kind of mixing together uh, with the other map uh, in order to create a more realistic looking wall. Uh, so what I also did for this is I have uh, a couple of different duplicates. Uh, I have one that's just below the ground plane uh, to kind of ease into the wall and you can kind of see that edge along the bottom uh, in the render. And then I have another small uh, copy of it where I'm using uh, I believe it's the road type and that's rounded a little bit so then that gets rid of the gap that was kind of showing up or uh, just that harsh edge that was on top of the wall uh, in the other scene and if we take a look at the material I've got uh, just a brick material uh, mixed with uh, a color map that's going to match up with uh, the displacement surface. And then some other additional uh, nodes in there, or maps to kind of lighten certain areas, make it look a little more interesting. And then I also have that brick mixed uh, for the bump uh, with the displacement, or just on the bump channel, not the displacement channel. So if you take a look, that is, that is separate. Uh, so then the bump, I've just added uh, 0.15 with a blender with this bump. So we can see the uh, little bump showing up with the brick, but not actually modifying the displacement with that because this is a low resolution map. And it would look really jagged uh, if I was to actually use that image to displace it. I'll just go ahead and render a close up as well. Uh, so overall, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, there's a little bit of stretching on the edges, uh, which I kind of compensated uh, the way the map looks with the color map uh, to sort of remove some of the bricks on, along there, uh, mostly with the blended map. Uh, but overall, it works pretty well. So you can create some uh, really interesting objects uh, using uh, the new tools and settings. And the ability to have displacements is pretty cool. Uh, if you're going to be displacing uh, other splines and other geometry modes, uh, let's just go ahead and create another spline. Uh, the best mode uh, is going to be the tube uh, because it has a very even geometry of about it, and if we take a look at the wireframe, uh, it's going to go all the way around, and it's not uh, variable, so it does mix uh, with the object pretty well. So this is a, a good way you could create uh, maybe a rock face with it.
and displace that surface. Uh, it's going to work a lot better than the other geometry modes just because of the way the UV is set up and also uh, just the distribution of polygons. Uh, so this we could displace. I'll just go ahead and add a fractal. And you can see that's uh, just displacing the surface uh, slightly. I'm just using a low render quality uh, right now. Uh, so remember that you can uh, multiply or double the quality for a better resolution. And there's just uh, one last thing I want to mention, uh, and it has to do with the texture coordinates and using uh, a different layer index. Uh, and I'm just going to load in the castle wall scene really quick. And I'm going to select the displaced object. Uh, and if we go into uh, the material for this, uh, there's two different sets of UV coordinates for splines. Uh, if you go to the layer index, uh, layer 1 is just divided uh, equally along the spline. There's also a layer 2 index that was added uh, in version 10.5, uh, which is more based on um, the height of different points, the distance between points, um, and it's not really going to work for displacements. Uh, I've just noticed that if I switch it over to now number 2 and attempt to dis uh, render that displacement. It just doesn't work. Uh, I have noticed at some point uh, with higher uh, displacement levels that it does displace the surface, but it's off screen. Uh, so for the most part, it's just incredibly unpredictable uh, at the moment. Uh, maybe in the future, there'll be uh, an improvement to that. Uh, but you can kind of see by looking at it that it does change the distribution of the surface with the layer 2. So sometimes it'll kind of compress uh, that U coordinate depending on how close it is to uh, the other uh, points or the edges.